What is good friends, we're here with OLT playoffs, round 1, game 1 between Cory and Kid of Death. Looking at the teams, this has to be Ice Fang Gliska, otherwise Cory is quite weak to uh, Zygarde. Um, assuming it's gonna be Spadef X Drill that Cory also used on a team to qualify for OLT. Spadef Drill with like Rocks of Quick Toxic and Rapid Spin. Uh, probably Spadef Pex as well. If it's T-Spikes, that's gonna be amazing in this game. Hitting um, half of Kid of Death team um, after Alakazam Mega Evolves, it gets hurt by Toxic Spikes. Celestia is also great. Steal up his drill, both can um, check the Alakazam. I'm not sure if it's ZX or Y because he has no Pursuit Trapping support. Like usually you see that Y paired with Pursuit, so it could also be ZX, I'm not sure about the Zard. And the Greninja is most likely Z-move. It could also be Specs, and he could just not have a Z-move user, but I assume Greninja is the Z-move user. So turn one, um, we could see either a knockoff here or a U-turn out from Kid of Death. And Cory can either click Toxic Spikes or Scald. Um, Toxic Spikes is the better play. But if he doesn't have it, if he only has Toxic, then I think Scald would be the better play to make in that case. But U-Turn is probably um, the play here for Kid of Death into either Alakazam or um, Heatran. Also, the Z-Move user on um, on Kid's team, it could be the Torn or it could be the Heatran. The Landers is most likely Scarf, and I assume it's Megazam plus Bantar. So there's the T-Spike. Now we could see one of the Steel types come out. Um, Kid of Death could pull a double here. Into Heatran maybe, or into in, doubles in the Torn. Um, Cory goes in the Excadrill. I guess that was a good mid on Cory's side because... What does he go for here? Toxic predicting? Yeah, goes for Toxic. Gets that Toxic on the Torn predicting the Defog. Heatwave didn't do that much. Uh, I assume we're gonna see a Defog this turn from Kid of Death. And now Cory goes in the packs. He can just get a Toxic Spikes back up as he U-turns out into either Zam or Tran. It goes in the Bulu, which is a bit odd. Because, like, he knew the Toxic Spike was coming out, but it was still a bit risky on a potential Scald. So now, um, Celesteela is most likely gonna come out here. Yeah, the reason why I liked uh, Cory going into Excadrill instead of going Steela, um, it would've covered Kid of Death doubling into Heatran. And, like, I suggested a double into Heatran. So he's Stoner just there, um, Cory makes the correct play going into Celesteela. Uh, Stoner would've caught the Zard by surprise. And Zard, Zard is a huge problem for Kid of Death. Like, no matter if it's X or Y, it's a huge threat. Like, Zard Y kinda kills everything. It just has to his Focus Blast versus Tita and Tren. So he goes in the Torn of Defog, but um, the Toxic is gonna wreck up and he can Heavy Slam here, so I don't know. Hard? Okay, so he just wants to go Hard Ninja on a Defog, and now Good Ninja uh, can scatter Zard with Ice Beam. So he doesn't really have a switch in. He kinda has to go Heatran. Like, this team is really weak to. Um, to Greninja if it's if it's protein. He goes in the Bulu um, from Ice Week to Ice Week, but to be fair, he didn't really have a switch in. Spadef Bulu can actually eat that up. So now um Kid of Death might want to scout for Gunk Shot. If Cory doesn't have Gunk Shot, he's gonna switch out here into his Salas Dealer most likely. U-turn. Oh, he got that U-turn on deck for momentum, I see. So I'm I'm pretty sure at this point that it's Z-Move Greninja. Um, Ice Beam U-turn. I should collect that to 25%. If it's more attack invested than special attack invested, which I think it is because Ice Beam didn't do much, that means it's probably a physical Greninja with um, either Z Dig or Z Low Kick, one of the two. I'm thinking it could be Z Dig Greninja. Um, especially if it's Zard Y and it's Z Dig Greninja that could lure Toxapex for Zard Y. But most people scout for it, you just have to get it on the right turn on the Toxapex. But yeah, now um, he brings in Gran on this Heatran, which means he either has Low Kick or Pump. I'm thinking he has Low Kick, just because he's most likely physically orientated. Uh, so what does he go to here? I mean, it's really obvious that Kid of Death is going to scout for Low Kick or Pump. So Cory could predict that and um, go for coverage. He goes for Ice Beam, predicting a switch. Um, he predicted, I think, either the Lando, the Bulo, or the Torn. Because those could have came out on the Low Kick, right? And he predicted him to scout for Low Kick. So Cory makes a good play there, and Kid of Death probably just has to sack something to this Greninja. And then afterwards, he can come in. Okay, he goes in a Tita, but if this has Loki, or, like, I don't like this play. I think, mm -hmm. I, unless he's just saying Tita is his mon that he wants to sack. Yeah, I guess he's, he might just want to sack the Tita, but, like, he has to sack something. And then afterwards, he can go into Alakazam to scare this out. Or he can go into Scarf Lander to scatter out afterwards. Uh, but he goes in the Bulu, so like switching around and letting everything take damage, okay. Hmm. So this Bulu is um, it's probably Protect Bulu because he has a Tita on his side, so Synthesis would be kind of odd. 
Like, I like Protect Bulu more in general anyway, because it helps you versus Choice Lot Mons, and it can help versus doubles from the opponent, just having Protect and Grassy Trampers leftovers is amazing. But now it dies to Ice Beam from this range, so like, he just has to pick what he wants to sack. I mean, Bulu isn't doing much when there's a Celesteela. Like, Celesteela, um, kinda walls his entire team besides um, the banter can potentially weaken it and the, the Heatron can beat it. But other than that, the Celestina seems super annoying for his team. And yeah, Cory can just click Ice Beam here. He's obviously gonna run the Kalk to see if it guaranteed kills. But yeah, I'm thinking the Tornadoes that didn't go for a knockoff earlier, the last move might be. Like, it might be U turn, Defog, Hurricane, Heatwave, Torn. Uh, but yeah, he does just decide to sack off the Tabu Bulu. Now either Alakazam or Land was gonna come out because Alakazam and Steela comes out. So do we see a Focus Blast? Because um, that would be the best move to hit Sala Steela with. Yep, we see Focus Blast and does 34. So that does a good chunk. He does connect. Um, what does Cory go for? Leech Seed or he goes for Focus Blast again? I'm um, predicting him to Leech Seed. I think exactly because Heavy Slam would have done a lot to Alakazam. Cory Leech Seed predicting the Heatran slash. Yeah, just in general, Leech Seed hits everything. He has no Magic out Pokemon. So now, um, I think Cory has to protect because health on Celestia is important. This Spadef drop is really annoying for him. Also, what did the Alakazam trace? The Alakazam traced Beast Boost. So if Alakazam kills this, it gets a Beast Boost. And rocks are up at the moment, which means Alakazam could potentially just run through Cory's team. But yeah, um, the next Focus Blast kills um, with the Spadef drop. So Cory has to switch out here. Goes in the Gliss score on the uh, most likely next Focus Blast. Yep. The 31. And now um, he's either gonna have to sack something or gonna pivot into Excadrill here on a Psychic. I, I think you always Psychic here though. You don't want to risk him staying in. Uh, this Glisco is good to have though for Cory because it can come in on Tita and roost off. Like it can roost off Stone Edges. And yeah, Psychic is definitely gonna kill from this range, so he pivots into Excadrill anticipating Psychic, and I think that's what Kid of Death just went for, yep. And now he gets some Leech Seed recovery here. A uh, Focus Blast is obviously gonna kill. He already hit a few Focus Blasts, 2 or 3, 3 I think, right? So, um... Do you Rapid Spin or do you um, Earthquake here if you're Cory? Like, Kid could switch out, but if he hits this, he gets a Beast Boost. Ooh, he misses. If he hit that, he got a Beast Boost. And the rocks would have been on the field and the Zam might have just won him the game right there. But to be fair, he got a Spadef drop. Like, that miss obviously sucks. But to be fair, he got a Spadef drop on the Celesteela earlier that put him in a position to force out the Celesteela. So I think that kind of, like, that like you already hit three Focus Blasts and he also got a Spadef drop. So eventually he was going to miss one. Cory just went for Rapid Spin, which means he dies to the next Focus Blast. Like, he obviously, he needs the rocks gone for the Zards. I'm thinking at this point that he's most likely Zard Y with um, Z Dig Greninja to do in packs. And if, Zard, if rocks are off the field, Zard can live a hit from Alakazam. So Focus Blast bobs that. Also, I'm thinking this uh, Alakazam is modest. Just from the damage, it's doing 27 to Spadef Drill. So let me run a calc real quick here on the side. Psychic does 90 to 107 if the Zard has no bulk and is Zard Y. Um, it's, it's, it has to be Zard Y because Zard X dies in one guaranteed. Uh, but yeah, if this is modest Zen, which I'm thinking it is based off the damage from earlier moves, Psychic does 90 to 107. It's a 43.8% chance to Oko this Zard. If the Zard has some HP investment, then it has a better chance to live. But I assume it's max speed Zard because Cory's team is quite weak to like opposing Medicham. And you at least want a speed tie with opposing Medicham but Zard Y and have the chance to win a potential tie. Because other than Greninja, like Cory has no Scarf if I see this correct. His drill was left. Yeah, yeah his team is quite slow. He doesn't have a Scarf. He's going to just change that move and it's most likely Z move. He does get the roll with Psychic. Gets another Beast Boost. Um, yeah, it was a 43.8 chance to Oko, so this was in Cory's favor, if I see this correct. If he had some bulk investment, that was even more in his favor, but I think he didn't have any bulk. Uh, so Celestila has to come out and click Protect here to get some uh, Leech Sheet plus Leftovers recovery. And now um, Cory obviously got rid of the Spadef. He got rid of the Spadef drop on his Stila, but the Zem has to boost now. So um, Focus Blast would probably just destroy the Celestila. So what Cory might have to do is try to pivot around, I don't know. Um, he switches out on the Protect, okay. 
So I guess Kid of Death didn't want to... Um, he didn't want to stay in with the lose health to the lead sheet. Heatran can get a Broxy or a Magma Storms, okay. I'm assuming the Heatran... Yeah, Heatran is the rocker and Lando has to be Scarf. So now... Um, Would you Ice Beam here if you're Cory predicting him to pivot into like Landorus on a low kick or on a Z dig? Does he even have space for low kick? He showed U turn. What else did he show? U turn Ice Beam? I think he has space for low kick. So he goes for Z move. Kid goes on the Torn. Um, pretty much Torn was the play that to predict. Um, predicted low kick or he predicted Z dig and he went for Z dig. And. Yeah, I mean, Cory could have Ice Beam there, but. Because a pivot into Torn or Lando could come out, but I understand that he just wanted to kill the Heatran. Because if he kills the Heatran, his Celestila, Celestila plus um, Gliscor can solo. Um, well, and Pex in the back can also help to, for the Torn. Well, the Torn is on a time; it's toxic. Torn is not a big deal for him. But yeah, I assume Kid was like, even if Cory predicted there um, the Torn, I think Kid was just willing to sack the Tornado. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was a fine play in that regard. Now he's gonna U-turn here. I don't know if he should have. Like he switched out his plus to Mega Alakazam. Um, that Cory had to protect right with the Steeler, and after that, Focus Blast right there. <laughs> okay, I don't understand why you would Focus Blast there. Obviously predicting the Salus Steeler, but that just seemed unnecessary. Like. I don't think Cory could afford to go hard into Celesteela because it was quite low. I would have gotten 2 KO'd from that range, right? Because it's modest Zam. Like, they're playing a bit... I'm trying to calc how much the Focus Blast did. From what I can see here, Focus Blast to Fist Death Stealer does um, 38 from Zam to 45 if it's modest. But Cory Zam... I think Cory Stealer is a bit more spadef because I think he took it a bit better earlier. But I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, Landris, you turned out... Um, I'm behind on the Celesteela and got a Brox. It's Ice Fang Gliscor as I figured because he's weak to Zygarde. That just has to be the case. Um, Cory can just Roost here to scout what the Lando locks itself into. And now um, Cory can Roost again because if Lando stays in, Gliscor stays at full. And exactly, if Kid of Death doubles and he stays in, then he's in a good, good position. Um, so now... Unless this Tita has Ice Punch, it can't really hurt the Gliss score. I assume it's just Stone Edge Crunch Pursuit and then either Fire Punch or Super Power in the last slot. I don't think it would be... Would it be Ice Punch on this? I mean, this team does have some ways to deal with Gliss score, and Gliss score is also not that common in Sunimon or you. I don't think it's Ice Punch, if I'm being honest here. So there's the Earthquake, and if he doesn't have Ice Punch, he can't kill this. And Cory can just Roost off here. And then if Glisco loses the flying type, it resists Stone Edge, which means it only does around 30-ish percent. So um, Curry's in a really good position now. He can just roost up here. He loses Glisco. And uh, Kid of Death is forced to switch. He cannot stay in here, but he does stay in it. It's just 33. And... Um, hmm. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, like, what does he even go to? Lando. Um, Would have been scary if Cory Ice Fang there. Now, does he HP Ice here or does he U turn predicting the Celestealer? Hmm. Glisco is at minus 2. Does he U I think he U turn here, right? Cause, yeah, because Glisco is at minus 2, which means even if he off quakes or I think there, like you can pivot into like. Yeah, exactly. Alakazam is at full. Alakazam tries his regen. And um, Cory might have to sack something here. Either the. Sacks the packs, okay. I was saying. Hmm. I mean, I don't think he needs the packs to win. And Greninja, maybe he should have sacked the Greninja, I don't know. But yeah, you can just go for Leech Seed or Heavy Slam here. Gets for Leech Seed. And Cory is free to click Leech Seed again here. Kid of Death is most likely gonna U turn out into Heatran. Um, does he Leech Seed again? Yep, exactly. Cory makes the correct play there because Lando couldn't do anything to Celesteela. Now, um,. Does just protect because rocks are already up, so there's no you lose nothing from clicking protect that turn. And now he has to go into Alec, uh, into Glisco. I mean, <laughs> it's not Z move 
um, Heatran, so Gliscor was able to come in on Heatran. Uh, Kill of Death Mask gets double into Alakazam, and Alakazam can threaten out the. Um, but that's not a big problem for Cory as long as he doesn't get Spadef dropped. He, he doesn't, yeah. I mean, even if he got Spadef dropped, I don't even know how many Focus Blasts the Zem has left. Does he Leech Sheet? Yeah, he does Leech Sheet again. And exactly, Cory just has to keep his Stellar Stealer healthy. And. Kid has like nothing to knock off the leftovers, and the Stellar Stealer is just putting in a lot of work. Now we can just go back into Gliscor here, um, the Toxic Heal, the Poison Heal, whatever, will just cancel out the damage he takes from rocks, and if Alakazam comes out, it doesn't even matter because um, Cory can just go back into his Celesteela and tag on this Alakazam. Like, when a Zam was a plus two, it was scary earlier, so it goes for Shadow Ball there. Now, Shadow Balls again, as Cory either Leech Sheet or Harvey Slams, Leech Sheet and misses, so this miss gives Kid, I guess, a slight chance because he's getting the Celesteela low. Seven lead sheets left. He does hit that one, though. So now, um, I think... I was gonna say, he he could probably predict the Heatran and go for double seed. He goes for Earthquake predicting the Heatran. There was a there was a huge miss there. The Focus Blast miss. Would that have killed? It's modest. That might have killed. I'm not sure. Like, I, I, I would like to Kalk, but um, I don't want to miss any turns. So you turn into. He can't really go Heatran because this has Earthquake. Does he Lichita or does he Earthquake? He goes Earthquake, predicts the Heatran, Bob, Cory, Goat. Now Cory can just go for Protect. I mean, Chad goes wild, but Earthquake was really free right there. Because, yeah, like Lando couldn't touch Celestia. Celestia just gets leftovers recovery if Lando stays in. And um, where did he misplay? Did he, did he mean this turn or where did he misplay? Basically, he can just protect you to get more leftovers. I think he... Um, I don't know which turn he meant exactly. Let me know um, if you're watching this, Cory. <laughs> Maybe he meant the turn where he let his Celestila get low. I don't know. But yeah, Gliscor can just roost here. And now, um, Kid goes into Lando and he either has to HP Ice or U-Turn. Uh, Cory can either roost or go into Celestila. I think roost is the play. Is it? Well... <clears throat> yeah, I think roost is the play just to, s to be safe. So Alakazam comes out. Ice Fang. Okay, he Ice Fangs. Thought he would roost to just be sure in case uh, HP Ice comes out right there. Now, um, he can obviously live a Psychic from here. He could potentially stay in. Exactly, he does just stay in and goes for Earthquake because that is his best move to hit the Alakazam with. Um, but since he is intimidated, um, Kid can afford to recover up. But uh, Cory takes that as an opportunity, um, knowing that another recover is going to come out and goes into Celestia. And now. Leech Seed or Earthquake is coming. Oh, yeah, Leech Seed. Leech Seed was correct there. As long as he hits, he keeps his Celestia healthy. And I think you just protect here. There's like no reason to risk anything, right? Double seeds. Okay. Okay, Cory. Um, maybe the Alexander was out of focus blast. If the Ale if he explodes, I don't know why he exploded. Now he just loses. Didn't he need that Lando to bring the Alex the Gliscor low? Now he just loses to Gliscor plus the other. Like, he loses now. Um, I think he might have lost anyway, but he needed HP eyes. Yeah, this is over. You need to chip the Glyph score down so that he can maybe win with Alakazam. Um, now, Cory can just sack the um, Greninja here, exactly. And then afterwards, he comes in with. Um, he comes out with Glyph here and he clicks Earthquake and he pretty much gets a kill. Um, Glyph obviously outspeeds the Titar. Yeah, exactly, like ABR is saying in the chat. Boom was an auto loss. And now, uh, I don't think he can win at all. Alakazam is in range of Earthquake. So he would need to crit this Gliscor and he does not get the crit. So this game is over. Cory is up 1-0 in this series. I mean, Earthquake, he's going to outspeed the trend and Earthquake and kill it. I'll see you guys later with game two. There's going to be a snake game now in between. And you guys can expect that snake game as well. I got my man Count the Goat. Um, he's really good at NU. So I asked him if he wants to narrate that and he's most likely going to do it, hopefully. So that would be cool. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later with Game 2 and potentially Game 3. Smash the like button if you enjoyed and want to see more. And goodbye, friends.